Hello, first graders. So we've practiced making fish, we've made an aquarium, and now it's time for us to actually make fish to put in the aquarium. Now for this, you're gonna need a standard size piece of paper like this. You're gonna need some crayons. You'll need some scissors and some glue, right, right here. And uh, if you want to, you can color in your fish using crayons, or we can use watercolors. That's what I'd really prefer that you use. I think it's gonna look a lot better if you do. Now, for this paper, you're either gonna draw this way, or this way, but I want you to draw one very large fish, a very large one. Now you can make it as big as the whole paper, or if you want to draw it a little bit smaller, you can. Uh, usually I would only recommend you draw it smaller if you're going to draw more than one fish. Now I hope everyone remembers how to do our fish. Remember that a fish is always going to start off as a circle, an oval, or a football. The tail is always going to be a triangle. Now, after you have these things done right here, you can of course add things like the eyes, the mouth, gills, fins, scales, and of course lines on the tail. I also tried to tell you last time that you can make your fish look a little more cartoonish. You can give them an extra personality, make them look happy, angry, sad, uh, basically however you'd like to do this is up to you. These are just a couple examples. You can always come back here and check these out. And I also told you that you can also make some fishy friends. Now the fishy friends you can make, but I don't want the fishy friend to be the big thing you draw. I want a very large fish. These you can make as extras. So right here, I'm just going to start off by making my football shape. Then I'm going to make my little triangle here in the back. I think I'm going to make a little curve here. I think I'm going to make this one look very, very happy. And I think I'll give them a little closed eyes here. Some nice little fins down here at the bottom. Nice little fin up here at the top. And then of course my scales and my lines on my fins. Now you can see he's fairly good size. He's not huge, but he's pretty big. But I have plenty of room down here in case I wanted to do some of these little fishy friends, in case I wanted to do like a little starfish. I make a dot and five little points and then just go around all my little points to make my starfish. I could make a sea turtle. I can make pretty much whatever I want to. Now this is one example. Let me show you a couple that I've already gotten done over here. So here I have an extremely large fish really big, builds up the entire paper. He's so big that I really don't have enough room to do anything but the smallest fish. So he's a little bitty one, and I could always make another small little animal over here if I wanted to. But like I said, that one big fish is the one I'm interested in. If you're going to make one a little bit smaller, then you can make more little fishy friends over here. And of course, you can color them with crayons. Now, I would much rather that you use watercolors because watercolors and crayons go together extremely well. And here are my watercolors. Now, I'm going to remind you very quickly how to use watercolors. With watercolors, you always want lots of water and you always want a little bit of paint. So I got my water. I'm going to grab some paint right here. I'm just going to load up that brush. I'm just going to roll it around, roll it around, roll it around. When I have lots of paint, then I'm going to start putting it right on here. And you can see it works really well. And the reason why crayons and paint work together so well is because, look, I'm going to go over that crayon line and I can still see it. Usually, usually uh, watercolors cannot cover up crayon. You'll still be able to see the crayon through here. Now, I don't want you to have to watch me paint all of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up until I can finish the whole thing. Okay, so now I finished painting my fish, and I even went ahead and painted the snail here. Now, here is the tough part. The tough part is uh, you're going to have to wait for this to dry. If you're going to use watercolors, they look good and they're great and I want you to use them. But the bad news is if we are actually going to cut these out, then we have to wait for this to dry. Because if you try to cut something that's wet, it's probably going to tear instead of getting cut. That's just something that wet paper does. So if you have finished this, wait for it to dry. Give it about an hour. Go do something. Put it till the end of the day. Do this. Keep it for homework. But let this thing dry. And then after that, we're going to cut it out. So right now, I'm going to let it dry, and then I'll come back in just a couple of seconds. Okay, boys and girls, so this is already dried for me, and now it's time to cut these out. Now, you're going to want to cut these out as slowly and as carefully as you can. You don't want to make too many mistakes. The good news is that since we're gluing this on another piece of paper, if you make any mistakes, if you accidentally cut off the tail or cut off something you shouldn't have, you can always put it back together when we put it on our piece. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these out. And I'm not going to make you watch this. I'm just going to go ahead and speed forward so that you can see what it looks like at the very, very end. All right, so I've cut, uh, went ahead and cut out all my little critters here. And now it's time to actually take my glue and glue it onto my background. So it doesn't matter whether you use the tempera paint, doesn't matter whether you use the watercolors. Still, we got our little aquariums right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that these guys fit pretty well. And that 
guy looks okay, and this little girl right here looks okay, and this little seahorse is fine right there, so they all fit. Um, if you have to get rid of some of these that they don't fit, that's fine, don't worry about that. As long as the big fish is there, I think we're okay. Now, first graders, I know you're probably better at using glue than kindergarten, but it doesn't mean that we're really great. Please make sure that you're always using dot, dot, not a lot. Remember, putting glue in the middle and then sticking it over, that's a terrible way to stick anything. You basically want to do dots all around the edges. I'll try to go on the outside. If you're really good with using glue, you can draw a line, but that is harder to do. It's not easy at all. But if you're good at it, if it's something you can do, then please do that. Now I'm going to put glue only around the edges. Now I'm going to put it right on here. And I'm not even going to push it down. I'm just going to leave it like this for right now. Now I'm going to do the same thing for all my other little critters here, all my other little fishy friends. I'm going to put some glue on the back, put some glue here, let it stick down. Come over here, put glue on the back. There we go. Stick it down. And here's why I didn't push it. The way that you get glue to stick really well is you want to push it. But pushing it down like this is kind of hard, and there are a bunch of little pieces. So instead, I'm going to take this and turn it all the way upside down with all the pieces here. And now I'm going to run it this way. This way, I can put a lot of pressure on all of this. I don't have to worry about any little pieces sticking up or any glue coming off to the sides and getting on my hands. And I'm just going to rub it for about, oh, I don't know, 10 seconds ought to do it. But put a lot of good pressure on it. You want to make sure you push down. With glue, you need time and you need pressure. So once this thing is pretty much set, once you're happy with it, let's go ahead and flip it over. And it's pretty well done. There we go. Nice and neat. Now, you don't have to do this step, but some kids like to get some more paint. And if you want to, you can always do something like, oh, I don't know, maybe put some little pieces of seaweed here and there. These are little things you can add here at the very end. You can even get really flashy and try to do things like, oh, I don't know, how about some air bubbles? I can always make air bubbles by drawing little circles like this. I'm using blue to do that. And then finally, we have a good reason to use white paint all by itself. So I'm going to put some white right here. Let's put some white over here. And let's put some white over there. And now I've got some little air bubbles. And I'm done. So this is the project. I hope you guys have as much success as I did. Thank you.